Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 87 of the 40K Badcast. My name is Dan Boyd, and I am joined on this wintry evening <laughs> by the one and only Ice Storm Mix Snowplow. <laughs> hey, I'll have you know you should not crowd the plow. They are very vocal about that around here. <laughs> what is that a is that a Boston thing? Don't crowd like the plow. A, yeah, it's a New England thing. Don't crowd the plow. Okay. It's just whenever you're driving and there's a snow plow, give it some fucking room, as well you should. Those words don't rhyme. Don't crowd the plow. Don't crowd the plow is like, it's a slant rhyme. It's a near rhyme. I don't approve of this. And guess what, New England? You are officially on notice. Well, you should also not plow the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you should. I'm not going to tell you what to do. All right. I want to welcome the listeners to what is going to be the last bad cast of 2020. Correct. Uh, Campbell is moving across the country, across the world. But across the country, that's 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 a very uh, America centric sort of worldview there. And he's doing that at the end of this very month of December 2020. So we will be giving him a break. Normally, we would be recording two weeks from now, but he will be in the midst of unpacking his new place. So uh, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna give the little guy a break over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for it, Dan. <laughs> So this will be the last one of 2020. Right. Uh, the 27th of this month, December, marks the... Is the 27th as the four-year anniversary of us recording the first episode, or is that the 29th? It would be the 27th. 20, yeah, that's what I thought December it was. 27th, 2016 is when we recorded our first episode of the, of the show. Uh, and I think I got it out the week after, so after New Year's. Yep. Uh, January 2nd, I believe. Yeah, I think it's January 2nd or January 3rd, something like wow. this. It's one of those two on my calendar. Wow. Um, yeah, so that, I, I that's don't the thing wanna, I've... Gang, I'm not going to push Campbell to get his shit ready for recording anytime quick. He's moving across the country. It's a big deal. Uh, so I don't know exactly when we're going to get our first January show out, but trust me, we will get one out. In to at least one out in 2021. <laughs> yeah, and at that point, that'll probably be more of the like looking back at the dumpster year that was 2020. But uh, for now, let's just uh, live in the moment. Let's live in the present. <laughs> yeah, like we're not going to have any material for that one, huh? <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, the auspects, what's on our hobby radar. We'll start with hobby progress. And Campbell, I finally finished my first three Blade Guard veterans. And they look so fucking righteous. It took me a long goddamn time to paint them, and I could not be happier with how they came out. No, as well you should be. Just the, it's kind of like, I won't say it's like the nadir of your paint scheme, uh, but it's like a really nice pop of color. Because, I mean, you owe it to yourselves, listener, to go to Dan's Twitter account, which is db underscore sleazy, to check these boys out but they've got like some great skin tones going on they got some really cool red robes they got some wonderful balance of black white metals they're just suitably elite looking and they've got some wonderful heraldry that, that i personally am a big fan of now campbell you did use a word nadir to describe my painting do you know what nadir means i thought that was like the peak no campbell Nadir is the is, is the lowest the point. <laughs> <laughs> so you have you have insulted my painting. Well, that's my favorite kind of insult, which is one delivered entirely by accident. <laughs> the uh, the word you were looking for is zenith, Campbell. That's the one zenith. <laughs> that would have been nice to hear, but you know what? I didn't yeah, hear it. There's zenithal highlighting, but not <laughs> <laughs> nadirical <laughs> highlighting. Well, I was very, very happy with these models. I still am. They are uh, really cool. I'm uh, <laughs> reading these new Death Guard rules, though. Man, oh, man, and I'm, am I ready for <laughs> these Blade Guard to bounce off some Death Guard uh, <laughs> in a game at some point in 2021? Another fun thing happened with these uh, with this unit, though. Yeah, and you know, oh. you know what I'm gonna say because you you were there. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, some guy on Twitter got really mad because I painted a dark skin Raven guard. Yeah, which a, a, a thing a normal person would get mad about, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it's ridiculous because I guess now we got to talk about this. Like, yep. okay, so I think I've mentioned on the show before that canonically Raven guard all are albinos with black hair. Mm -hmm. I think that's stupid. 
It is. I don't like it, so I choose to ignore it when I'm painting my miniatures. And I have several non-white guy models in my Raven Guard collection because one, I want to paint dark skin. I like it. It's fun. It's a it's a it's a break from doing the same thing over and over again. And two, you know, I I, I feel weird when the lore of the game tells me that all my base marines need to be white. Understandable. I don't like it. Makes me feel weird. So this fella on Twitter, he uh, he gave me shit about it. And uh, his argument was that I should respect the lore, Campbell. Yeah, So because you're a fake fan. So Well, yes. Sorry, clear, I am a fake fan. You're clearly, not. clearly, we're fake fans, you and I. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, we do not, we do not, we're not even fans. It's, we're yeah, just we fake. have so little invested in this <laughs> podcast. We've recorded <laughs> Chex Notes 87 episodes of and played for Chex Notes 15 years. So, yeah, uh, nothing t- involved. So, two things. One, uh, if you're out there, dear listener, and you think you see somebody's models out there and you think for a moment, you know what, I should stop what I'm doing and tell this person how to paint their models. May I suggest you don't Mm -hmm. Uh, just because they're their models. They're not yours. Don't don't get involved in that. Let people paint whatever the hell they want to paint. There are, of course, exceptions for when you're like painting real life hate symbols onto models. Maybe don't do that. That's not Mm -hmm. cool. And my second point is that um, the backstory to Warhammer 40,000, y'all, and and listen close here because this is important, Mm -hmm. is fiction. It's not real. It didn't happen. None of it means anything. And you call yourself a fan. (laughs) (laughs) So so when you tell somebody, oh, you're not doing it right because at the blah, 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 in the blah, 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 when they blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. None of this happened. It's bad enough when it's like that's the incorrect shade of blue for the Battle of Agincourt or whatever. Where it's like it's bad enough when there's that sort of thing going on. And that's applying to Warhammer where, you know, again, this hasn't happened. So, like, you can stick to what's out there as a guide if you want to, but you super don't have to. And if you don't, again, who gives a shit? Uh, but when someone is also using it as a bad faith argument to argue for their own racism, like this random fucker on Twitter was, <laughs> it's a <laughs> a lot less compelling an argument. Yeah, so that was fun. That was a fun uh-huh. chapter of my... Was that yes? That was yesterday or was that Monday? I think it was yesterday. Uh, who cares? Doesn't matter. Uh, and yeah, so don't tell people how to paint their models and uh, shut the fuck up about the lore. It's fiction. Yep. Okay, uh, and then I also started in my second three Blade Guard vets, so I get to do it all <laughs> over again, Campbell. <laughs> we'll see you in February. All right, what you got? Uh, more than that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I finished the Ogroid Myrmidon, the blue meanie, as I keep calling him, Mm -hmm. uh, pretty recently. That was very blue. He's very blue. It's incredibly blue, but I want it incredibly blue. It's Zinchian or Uh, my whole army's kind of Zinchian. (laughs) I don't believe Ogroid (laughs) Myrmidons are supposed to be blue. As you can tell by my exhaustively researched diatribe on Twitter, they're supposed to be orange. Yeah, no, they're supposed to be whatever color they are natively in the realm of bullshit, <laughs> um, which is my favorite mortal realm. There's a whole campaign book about it out there. Any hymns to yeah, I painted the, the Ogre and Mirmadon. I was having a lot of trouble with the skin. I think I might have talked about this last time. I was having a hard time making it look natural because I love painting skin on models. It's one of the reasons why the whole <laughs> muscle bunch. Oh, oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> not in the kingdom death way. You are having trouble making the blue skin look natural, huh? Okay. <laughs> Let me wind that back a second. I'm having trouble making it look organic. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, Because there's a difference between like something looking natural because it's, you know, like a crazy color, like blue or orange or whatever. It's another to make it look like it's supposed to be skin and not metal. Because the first time around I worked on, I did highlights on it. I usually do highlights fairly fine, even when I'm painting skin on models, uh, because on an infantry size model, it looks fine. Uh, on faces especially, it looks great, but on a model with that much exposed skin and that big muscles, it looked really jarring and unnatural. Mm. Uh, so I was able to kind of go through a night painting with Dylan and just kind of like, you know, we have a normal weekly hang, just the two of us, and he kind of walked me through how he painted his just Ogren, and it kind of worked from there. Painting yeah. models in the sky, just the <laughs> two of us, Thanks, Dylan sir. and I. Ooh. That worked better than I thought it would. There you go. 
Uh, so I painted him. I also painted up the Boston Companions for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which is, from what I gather, a game I'm never going to play, but the models are pretty, so yeah, I'll keep getting those. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, like, hey. it's, it's, I, paint, I paint stuff because it looks cool. That's hey. what I do. Hey, I'm looking at these companions. Uh, none of them scream Boston to me. They're all from Fallout 4, which is set in Boston. The uh, the synth who looks like Blade, especially Boston fashion. They're peak Boston fashion. Listen, bud, I don't see a single coat. a single toke. Oh, here here we go. Hold up. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Fuck you, Baltimore. <laughs> I don't see a single Pats jersey, and I definitely don't see any uh, extra double Dunkachinos yeah, represented that- here. That's the problem. Really, this should be three identical people wearing Pats hoodies, shorts, and snow basing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, aside from those, uh, which little, yeah, again, little, I a little, little disappointed over here. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Looking outside my window, it's not what I see. So, aside from that, I um, I built the Blood Bowl halflings I got for my Secret Santa. And I, I got out. Oh, they are delightful models. First of all, I yeah. was very hungry building them because the uh, their Blood Bowl. Is it called a football in Blood Bowl? The thing they throw? What just, do they call it? Just a ball, just the my ball. dude. Okay, it's a sandwich uh, or I a pair of it's a, pastries. It's a, it's a pasty, isn't it? A, pa- a pair of them are, but one is straight up a sandwich with like oh. big cartoon slices of tomato st- and lettuce sticking out. Delicious. And building it, I was so fucking hungry, especially since their little score counter is the fork through <laughs> sausage. <laughs> uh, the models themselves, I did. I hadn't built any Blood Bowl models. I didn't realize how prescriptive they'd be. A lot like Necromunda models, they only really have one way you can build each one, yep. but with some head options. Yep. Although I got to do head options, everybody except for one player has a separate has a uh, two heads, but one guy has a choice. of of ferret sticking out of his pants like like, like where, where his where his you know his his I, I think as as you say schlong would be his his pebis please uh no just north of that like out of the belt line there's just a little ferret sticking out and there's one just sticking out and there's one sticking out wearing a scarf and they're very cute oh that's wonderful <laughs> yeah it's a delightful kit and i'm very excited to paint these guys oh um, great yeah and we'll talk about that more later in the show because guess what? Will. Hey, sorry, former Badcast fan. We're going to talk about Blood Bowl this episode. <laughs> so fuck you. Uh, just some behind the scenes info. We got yet another message from former Badcast fan who changed their name again. Uh, maybe this time to s- sl- try to slide in without causing too much trouble. Uh, and guess what? Fucko, we see you. <laughs> we see you and your IP address every time you comment on our website. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I tell you what, former Badcast fan. I'm starting to turn around. At first, I was like, what the fuck is this? And at the second time, I was like, okay, he's doing a bit. That's fine. And now you're, I think you're still doing a bit, but it's fine. Whatever. Keep doing your bit. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, if, this is, if this is how you engage with the podcast, I'm okay with it. Last, but certainly not least, I decided to close out 2020 with one more attempt at full jokerization. And I built the chaos chariot and I'm painting that now. <laughs> A lot of people have been saying jokerization and jokerfied lately. Mm -hmm. I do not know what this means. Um, All right. So there is a film, a uh, motion picture, if you will, called Joker. I've seen Um, it. It's it's pretty good. It is pretty good. But uh, it's kind of just, you know, it's it's the deteriorating mental state that leads into something between a psychic break and a super villainy. I guess that people kind of use that as a reference to a psychotic break wouldn't be a psychic break, would it? Oh, that is true. Yeah, that is true. Psychotic. Sorry, I'm just I'm just correcting you up and down this episode, but you you keep using the wrong words. (laughs) I'm two for two so far. Let's see where we go. (laughs) Yeah, it was a pretty good film. I guess uh, I guess people are using it like they're just embracing the terribleness of 2020, huh? That kind of is it. And that's kind of this with the Chaos Chariot, which need to remind you, the Chaos Chariot was the first model I painted this year. Ooh. So it was a portent of things to come. Hey, your, so I figure, book, your book ending 2020. Exactly. Because I want it to go away and be contained. There you go. All right, cool. Did you play so, any games? I did. Uh, oh. Before... Um, Yes. Yeah, last week, I think, I got in one last uh, game of Age of Sigmar with Dylan, Kyle, Cody, and Jimmy. It was a mega battle. It was in Dylan's garage when there was snow on the ground uh, with the door open so we could have you know a decent cross breeze and everyone was masked up the whole time. So it felt like pretty good, pretty safe about it. And it's been you know over a week and everyone's fine still, so it's all good. It was at the top of Sirith Ungol. 
with the howling winds around us, and the Witch King was there. <laughs> so what's Seer Thungal? I probably fucked that up. I'm not a... I'm not a... I know it's a band. That doesn't help me, though. It, it is a band with some really great... With some really great album art, I'm not going to lie. The album art really just looks straight up. I guess up. Seer Thungal was a pass, huh? Yeah, so not really it wouldn't at the top be the, of a wouldn't, mountain. wouldn't have a top. Yeah, it's a pass or a cleft through the FL Dwath. Look at near Minas Morgul. Yeah. Uh, we're reading the same article. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one on Google. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I guess it's my turn to mess up with the words I use. That's all right. You just walked into your own trap. <laughs> oh, I played myself, huh? <laughs> you played right into your own trap card. Thanks. Okay. So um, here's a fun fact. Fun about, fact uh, me. I've mentioned playing outside has kind of been the, more or less my gaming lifeline over the course of this pandemic. Uh -huh. When it's like... 30 degrees outside yeah. and you have glasses on and a mask on no. you are experiencing the fog of war at all times yes so i had to play without my glasses on which meant i could only kind of see for most of the game because dear listener i can't see too good without them that being said this was a 4500 point aside mega battle i Archie, brought 2000 points of dave's darkness cody brought 2500 of ogre Z and then Kyle uh, brought 1,500 of Caradron, Dylan had 1,500 of Old School Dwarves, and Jimmy had 1,500 of Old School Wood Elves. And it was probably the most fun like mega battle I've really played in a very long time. Uh, AOS does a very good job at streamlining the, the sort of process in their mega battles. So basically, all combat is simultaneous instead of alternating one guy, one guy, one guy, one guy. Uh, you only have one spell per caster, caster per turn. Uh, all models in a unit fight instead of having to finagle around like being within an inch of whatever your target is or whatever. And you just automatically get three command points per turn to distribute as you need. Uh, which is... it's. They're all little changes that don't really fundamentally change how you understand the game, but they do all make the game move faster in a way that I think is very cool. Uh, so the way the table is set up, basically Cody with his slightly bigger force took on the two dwarf armies while I took on Jimmy's elves. And um, yeah, it, it kind of ended up being me versus Jimmy at, while Cody was against the other two. Um, I bulldozed the elves. Cody kind of mutually assured destruction against the dwarves over the first two turns. And then I just kept sweeping up from there because I basically finished off all of uh, Jimmy's knife ears. Once my line hit the elf line, I just kind of tore right through him because elves. And I had Demon Prince, which was the Ogre of Mirbadon. I painted him just for that game to use as a Demon Prince because that's how I got to 2,000 points. Uh, he flew up, stabbed a couple guys, got killed. Then my Chaos Lord killed Jimmy's general and uh, rolled up Dark Apotheosis and became a Demon Prince. So I got to put the model back on the table. Then hey. he got killed again. Hey! <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the battle line of the game shifted pretty dramatically over the course of this to kind of shift to be uh, from your typical like um, long, like your typical deployment into a hammer and anvil deployment by the end of it, uh, which was pretty cool. And when the dust settled by the end of turn four, chaos and destruction, which is ogres, were basically ahead on points like eleven to eight, and we called it. And it was just it was just a lot of fun. It was kind of a bummer because you know this is the last time I'm gonna game with all these guys for some time anyway. But it was at least a good game to go out on because if you have like if my like last game in new england really was just a total fucking like shutout awful game i'd feel really bad about it but at least it was like a super fun nah, like really, you're real full close of one. shit you would have if it, it okay that yes if you would have been shut out i feel like yeah i'd feel bad about that but if you had completely dunked on your friends for one more time i feel that you would have been playing space jam the entire time on the flight to oregon <laughs> yes space jam 10 hour mix on you. yeah let me just download that one uh, i feel like i feel like even then jimmy's probably ready to see see the back of you <laughs> as you hightail it out west well th that's the thing i'm just kind of like i've already i've said my piece y'all can pick up the pieces hey without jimmy me. hey jimmy guess what i'm on your side i don't blame you fuck this guy <laughs> But yeah, it was it was a good time. Um, I'm I'm gonna miss those guys, but again, I'll be coming back east once it's safe to do so fairly regularly, and we can hopefully get some weekend Necromunda campaigns or something of the sort going on. All right, all right, sounds yeah. good, man. Yeah, how about you, bud? I had a game against one Tony Kopak. Fuck you, Baltimore, and his Necrons, and I uh, did not win. I got not maybe not stomped, but like like soundly beat i think the final score is like 82 to 56 mm -hmm. uh so you know a, a a drubbing but maybe you know not like a complete 
uh, uh, posterizing. Uh, though some things did happen. I did. I got the first turn, and I got a guaranteed charge off with a bunch of aggressors into Tony Scorpex. I hit with all their attacks. I hit seventeen times, and I was nice. And he had to pop the strategy to make me wound on fours. Mm -hmm. So seventeen, uh, and he had um, six Scorpex in the squad against my six aggressors. Uh, so 17 uh, hits. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I roll up my wounds. Campbell, four successful wounds oh. <laughs> out of 17. And, I was, oh, and that, that was kind of the, that was set the tone for the game where gotcha. it's just like, all right, so I can't roll wounds. I, I could roll hits the whole game. Couldn't roll wounds. And, you know, it, it just, it, it just didn't work out. There's a, a couple of missteps too. Uh, sometimes Campbell, Sometimes you just you, you bring everything in on turn two, all your reserves on turn two, and say, fuck it, deal with all this shit. And mm -hmm. sometimes that'll get you a win instead of holding off till turn three and trying to be smart about stuff. Yeah, sometimes my, you just got to fucking get into it. And I did not do that. And that probably cost me the game, too. My pro strategy is to always just get into it, which is why I play Black Templars and Chaos Warriors. So uh, two things that I learned from this game. One, mm -hmm. uh, I hate scarabs. Hmm. They're uh, way too cheap for how many wounds they have, uh, and uh, that, that 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 they're annoying. They're really annoying. Okay. And then two Scorpex, oh buddy, his Scorpex unit that I couldn't kill just completely destroyed my uh, my right flank all by themselves. Yikes! So uh, that was uh, that's a tough unit. That's a nasty unit. So, mm -hmm. but still, it was a good game. Uh, my first game against Necrons in ninth, and I look forward to trying again against them. Nice. All right, let's talk about some new stuff. First things first, House of Artifice for Necromunda goes on Ooh. sale. We reviewed it over on Goonhammer.com. I suggest everybody go over to Goonhammer.com and read some stuff. It's a good website full of good content. I write for it. You write for it. And guess what, listener? You can read it. And it's good. It's free also. You can just get up there and read it. No yeah. paywall or nothing. So I would have joined in on that one, but my life is a box fort right now, and my work is on fire right now, so I couldn't get to my third job in time to get on that one. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, we reviewed the book, and uh, I can, since we've already released our review on it, I can tell you what I think about it, and it's okay. It's uh, not very good. Now, there is some... I don't know about if controversy is the right word, but a lot of people think that Vansar are hideously overpowered in Necromunda. I am actually of the opposite opinion. I think Vansar are one of the more underpowered gangs because, yeah, they can shoot good, but they can't do anything else. Uh, so this book did fix one of their problems, which is slow movement with the uh, the, the hoverboard riders. The, mm -hmm. They're called Neotex on grav cutters. Uh, they're pretty good. That's actually a really good unit uh, that is going to see a ton of table. Uh, but their new champion, the Archaeotech, just doesn't. They don't really do anything. Mm. Uh, they don't have a. They don't have a defined role. There's, there's not, not nothing real. Like they're they're they have a. The the thing with these champions, these new champions that they're putting out, is they have a very small equipment list, right? Right. And for these. They're just not that good. They, mm. I don't think they are going to be doing a whole lot actually on the on the uh, on the table. So, not a huge fan of them. And then the the tech skills they brought out some tech skills for Vansar, and they universally are terrible. There's like, one that's okay. I wouldn't even call it okay. <laughs> okay. I, like okay, so the tech skills can be used by the Archaeotech, which is a new champion. Uh, and, but they also get access to savant skills, which are generally good. Mm -hmm. So just never take tech skills. You've yeah. got you've got good skills in savant, and you've got bad skills in tech. So just never take them. And this is the kind of thing that's just kind of like I don't know, rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Where it's like, gang, put some effort into these fucking skills, please. You know, the, the skill situation in Necromunda is already bad. You don't need to throw in six useless skills. Well, on top of it like it just it's not a good look i mean the thing is there are six skills of questionable utility i won't say they're all totally useless but some of them are totally useless but many of them have drawbacks and that's the unusual thing because there's skills that maybe aren't great throughout the various skill trees but most of them don't have drawbacks on top yeah of one of them is like what makes your guy basically immune to rad radphage and toxin but he glows in the dark and in pitch black rules is always revealed See that kind of owns because that's really funny. It is, but, but that's that like, should be that should be the bad one, not the standout 
quote unquote good one. Right. You know? Yeah. Like that should be the joke one. Cause like we've talked before about how every set of six skills is usually like one great one, one good one, four flavor ones or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. And this is like six flavor ones, but six, they're all bad. Worse. Six bad ones. They're bad. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this book. Vance, our players, I'm sorry to report this. Uh, you, y'all will do well with the Neotex on Grav Cutters. Those are some very good gangers. Mm. All right, uh, Death Guard are getting new rules, and oh boy, this, they're, they're, oh man, this Death Guard book is going to be a fucking problem. Uh, disgustingly resilient changes from a five up feel no pain to a flat minus one damage, yeah. which. A lot of people initially were like, oh, this sucks. This is lame. And then our friend Kevin Jensen, Primaris Kevin, over at Goonhammer, once again, did a Hammer a Math article about, like, is it, you know, is it actually worse than the five up? And the answer is both yes and no. In some cases, it's better. In some cases, it's not. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, against damage two and damage three weapons, it is better. And of course, damage two and damage three, we see a lot of those yeah, these days in 40K. To know, it's important to know that Plague Marines now have two wounds each. So oh, that's there's actually that a also. lot more important. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely the sort of thing where it's like people are focusing too much on what they're losing as opposed to what they're gaining, and they don't really grasp that this is a side grade. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. Oh, I think it's, I think it's markedly better because... Of the proliferation of damage two and damage mm -hmm. three weapons in the game. Yeah. I think that, like, when heavy bolters are all damage two, but yeah. against plague marines, they're damage one, and it takes twice as many shots to kill a plague marine from a heavy bolter, that's a pretty big fucking upgrade. And all the plasma out there is generally damage two on the overcharge. Right. That's a pretty fucking spicy meatball there, fella. Yeah. I think it also does, like, I know one of the, like, typical pain points was like, oh, no, no, Les, goods, you're going to kill my guys. Like, no, no that, they're, they're, not. they're not going to. <laughs> but I will say for the person with the Les guns or auto guns or whatever, it means they're, it means you can at least roll those dice knowing that at least something might get through when before it was essentially worthless. All right. I'm excited to see where the rest comes out with this book. I think, uh, I think Death Guard are going to end up pretty fucking powerful, though. Yeah. They got uh, that Plague Bong, too. <laughs> yeah. So the Plague Bong, I'm really hoping somebody turns it into a real bong. Though that plastic, I, I hope that they plastic, do. plastic probably, <laughs> probably can't stand up to any sort of heat. No, so, I, I don't want anyone to get fucking somebody's throat going cancer to, because somebody's of that. going oh, of to anyways. And uh, I just want to see a video or a animated GIF of them fucking hitting that bong at least once, and then immediately dying probably. But that's you know that's not my <laughs> but problem. Cut before that part. I don't need to see that. <laughs> All right, uh, Blood Bowl got a frequently asked questions document, which is fucking wild because Blood Bowl never gets rules updates, and they did it right after the new edition dropped. That's cool. Uh, there are a few uh, big changes. One of the biggest, of course, being that teams can now use multiple rerolls per turn, which is crazy pants. That's hilariously great. Uh, don't know exactly how that's going to affect games going forward, because guess what? I've played one game of Blood Bowl. Uh, so far, <laughs> but I think that's a pretty fun rule. So we'll see how that's going. But hey, I'm just happy that Blood Bowl got a fac. Yeah, no, it, it's kind of like um, nothing at all. Then all at once is kind of seems where it's like right now, where it's just like it's like oh, there wasn't really much coming out new for this game, and now here it all is. Like there were new yeah. models coming out. But I'm like, ready the, for all at once, changing. my guy. I don't need to, I don't need a fucking drip drop fucking thing with Blood Bowl. Give me all the rules. Give me all mm -hmm. the models. I don't fucking care. I'll, I'll deal with it. Well, speaking of new rules, new models, new other things, I don't really follow Warcry, but because there's like a new Warcry book coming out, they decided to just kind of, it's going to have all this new Slanesh stuff in it, the new Heat Knights of Slanesh releases, and they just kind of showed it all off, and I'm really digging it. I'm really fucking digging it. I am so glad, so glad that they went with the obvious choice for the Slanesh Beastman name, the Slangor. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I'm so happy about this. This, of course, you call it the Slangor. That's amazing. Yeah, it rules. And like, I, I love like the. Um, we've seen some models in full. Like, I think they showed the Shard Speaker in full. Uh, everyone else, you just kind of see in these little bits and bobs here and there. But they've got this very sort of like Persian aesthetic, like sort of like armies of antiquity, sort of like Middle Eastern aesthetic. But they've also got the like um, these like 
chest like breast guards over just their heart which is kind of like uh mirroring the single breast that like demonettes have and stuff like that and they're going for like a lot of exposed skin and a lot of like a gladiator sort of aesthetic which i think is a very cool way to like get across the one cut one kill perfection sort of idea without just being like here's my dude with eight boobs or whatever like i really love the look they're doing on these things and the fact we're getting some marked beast men out of it too dope uh, i'm i'm here for it i'm here for this new flavor of muscle bunch dope a mean you just mm-hmm. love your fucking muscle bunches don't you i absolutely do i am fucking here for that he-man conan shit uh we got a new character for blood bowl also scroll half height a new star <laughs> player he is a undead dwarf thrower yeah he's fun and he's actually really good too like the the rules uh because undead are they don't have a natural thrower any of the undead teams well mm-hmm. i guess the fucking tomb kings does but fuck them they're not a real team and if anybody plays Tomb Kings, you already know that they're a bastard, like straight up. So just, yeah, they're not a know. real army either anymore. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so scroll half height. What he's he's good because he gives undead a thrower, uh, and undead already have some good agility characters in their ghouls. Mm-hmm. So you can you with scroll if you've got him as a star player, you can re- really cause some trouble as an undead team. And then finally, we got a new plane for aeronautica imperialis and again <sighs> and big time big surprise it's another imperial plane <laughs> so all right here's the thing though it's like it's a marauder which is like one of my favorite planes hence why i've got that fucking three pound of resin monster waiting to be built but it's like a marauder with less like it's got it's, a big bomb it's, it's got, got a big a, bomb it's got a big bomb so it doesn't have the dorsal turret and stuff and it's just really uninspiring to look at it compared to like the marauder destroyer where it's you know it's visibly different this just looks like you built a marauder and forgot to put the turret on the back I of it I feel like I feel like they I don't know they're squandering the the AI stuff here Yeah like, I kind of feel that way too Like the thing that are going to interest people is like n- like factions right but Yeah like we don't need nine imperial planes or but if we if do, were, six of them sh- or three of them should be Space Marine ones or something, right? Or, uh, or you know, maybe throw in some Eldar planes or some uh, uh, some fucking Tyranid biomorphs or something like. Yeah, like, like I, know, th- I know that's the, the kind of stuff that people are going to get like fucking horned. Yeah, like for. new armies and new starter sets are the things that always get people into games. Like I imagine, I don't know how. Again, twenty twenty has been a weird fucking year, and AI is kind of a. I don't want to say the game GW forgot because that sounds very dramatic, but it's definitely a game that gets a little less attention than many of the other ones. Well, I'm um, going to be giving it some attention in the new year as I uh, tackle at least that Mega Bomber, which I am, <laughs> bro, I am just not excited about that it, at all. I I kind of wish I got. Uh, I actually I got Greg, who got you as this, has his goon secret Santa in that one Discord we're both in, got you that as an own. I kind of wish I got him the Mega Bomber as an own. Yeah, that would have been that would have been some gift of the Magi shit right there. Well, let's see what happens next year. All right, let's um, uh, let's move on. Then I got one last model. Oh, I only what the care. Fuck? It's an Ultramarine one. It's Uriel Ventress. So they had oh, a Black yeah. Library preview mm-hmm. event, which I didn't tune in for because I'm like, it's one thing to see new models, new releases, and so on, but like a. Uh, book stream where it's like there's going to be maybe some interviews with authors and like a picture of a cover or two doesn't really seem that enthralling to me because you know if a model isn't for an army i play i can still go that looks cool but if an author isn't an author i like it's not going to mean anything to me um but there was one model they showed off which is uriel ventress and i think the model's okay uh i think there's some weird things about him like his wrist guard is turned at the wrong angle to his elbow which looks kind of fucked up he's got square boots which is kind of strange uh and some people don't really like his head I think he's okay. I think I might get him and convert him to something. Uh, but a while ago, we kind of complained about that, or I complained rather, they're making models of characters from books that I hadn't read that weren't the classics. And you kind of were like, shut the fuck up. Like, they're going to make what they're going to make, and that's cool. And this is a case where they did take a character from a series of books that uh, I don't want to say use the word classic, but they are old. <laughs> Because uh, I don't know if you've read the Year of Interest books, but uh, they're not why I'm an Ultramarine player. I'll, I'll say that much. No, I haven't read them. I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna. And I will. I will gladly. I will just fucking open it up here, my dude. This model is Garbaggio. <laughs> 
there's a lot of things that don't look quite right with him. No, his his haircut is. <laughs> oh God. He, yeah, he's definitely got the like the <laughs> co- got the fucking ball cut. You know, he's got the fucking COVID like shaved the, his own like he wanted to do his own version of the high and tight at home, and he it's doesn't like, really have the barber skills to do so. It's like Gilliman's like Uriel. We cannot afford going to the fucking stylist. Sit down in this chair. I got a bowl. We're getting after it right now. And Uriel's like. Bro, come on. Seriously, don't make me do this. You're going to make me look awful. And Gilman's like, I'm, I am the fucking Primark. You and will while, do what I say. And while Gilman's shaving his head, he's on the phone with somebody else and not even looking at his job. Like, I bet behind his hair, there's like a big square cut out of the back of it. Yeah. This model yeah, is, is, let's just go with not inspiring. I can, I can agree with that. I can now, agree We're with firing that. shots at GW this, this hey, episode, huh? You, you know, when there's... We call it like I see, we see how's this, though how's this for shilling? Shillcast. How's yeah. this for shilling, former Badcast fan? You fucking mook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to we make the call. All right, this one, this one. Okay, this was a little long, so you got to bear with me. All right, okay. it's from John Meissen via email, and that email is of course contact at forty kbadcast.com. And John says, "Hello there. I have a dilemma that I was hoping either." you or your community could help me out with. I have been in the hobby for 20 something years now. And when doing a hobby purge, I came across some early nineties models and scenery from when I first got into the game. I was going to pass this onto another hobbyist who could enjoy slash use it. But my partner convinced me to keep it. We've been playing since we first met and she enjoys the nostalgia of the way the game used to be. She convinced me to devote a shelf of one of my display cabinets to be a sort of museum shelf for these items. Now, I recently came across two units of early 90s models with very little effort. They could be updated and repainted to stand alongside my modern miniatures. But my partner wants them to go into the museum shelf as a show of early 90s paint jobs complete with bold colors and goblin green bases. Should these venerable miniatures be placed into safekeeping as a keepsake of time never to be repeated or fulfill their true purpose and be reborn once more to see glorious combat on the tabletop? Campbell, I anticipate your reply. Yeah, uh, John, J- Jono, I don't know if you necessarily know exactly how to me you are pitching this ball, but you are st- throwing it right to me because this is my shit. So uh, well, some listeners might know I painted a second edition style Ultramarines army in 2013. Mm-hmm. It's like 5,000 points of the fuckers. So I have Dang, that and much. That, yeah. Uh, wow. In in modern points, I think it's about 5,000. Back then, it was like 4,200 wow. or something like that. Okay. But that's replete with goblin green bases, red bolter casings, yellow shoulder trim, all that shit. I do seem to remember a certain, <laughs> a certain game between you and I at Nova in, I guess, 2016, where the retro ultras uh, did not... Did not play so well against my uh my imperial guardsmen did you know it's very hard to keep up with the meta when you're painting models that came out no later than 1997 it's true <laughs> uh, i mean i mean you're you were playing against original model steel legion guys who came out in s- the distant future of 1998 hey that's a whole year more <laughs> first of all second of all you had wyverns I did have wyverns and they'd kicked your ass yeah yeah, yeah. they were they were good back then <laughs> All right. So aside from this, here's what I think. Like, first of all, I love that old aesthetic. Um, but I too also have like a couple old models from way back when, namely this one Space Marine Captain I have that I left how I painted him when I was a kid that I kind of keep around my hobby desk just so I can kind of look at him and go like, oh, that's where I came from. I personally would update some of these and keep some the same. Mm. Like if there's like a character or something like that, like I would probably keep them how they were just as sort of like a special sort of like throwback sort of thing. And if you want to paint some of those models in the old style, but with your modern skills, mm. because it's been, I, I, I'm, <gasps> I'm no uh, math magician, but it's been a few years since the nineties and you're probably been, better. Oh, fuck you. Been. Speaking <laughs> of the nineties, fuck. <laughs> I've been so good about that one too. Oh, you rarely fuck up, but I got you this time, Campbell. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, I would recommend painting some of them. I mean, I mean, I know, like we all have our backlogs are all totally clear, right? Uh, I I would recommend making a little hobby project out of painting some of those '90s models in the '90s aesthetic and like updating 
either doing them just 90 style in general or updating your specific old scheme and seeing how you can tackle it now because that's going to be a very fun change of pace because I think you'll find not just painting different colors than you paint now like you know painting brighter colors as opposed to like the more drab colors we kind of go for nowadays but just the sort of like texture and rhythm of the model itself is very different than mod than modern ones and I think that's going to be a very fun experience for you it's also probably going to be like a pretty nostalgic one too so I recommend like putting together a 90s playlist and just fucking letting it ride while you put these guys together. I think you'll have a lot of fun painting them 90s style. I think that's a great answer to this question, and I will say no more on that, Campbell, because I'm I'm dropping a bomb on you right now. <gasps> this is a WMDK twofer. Oh, my God. That's right. We got a great email from Andrew <laughs> a Schaffenacker. W, a double which, WMDK, sorry. Oh. Uh, Damn it, Campbell. Where's my fucking sad trombone sound? There it is. I regret to inform you that your position on this podcast has been eliminated. That's okay. Numi, come sit in my lap and record the rest of the show for me. Anyways, from Andrew Schaffenhacker, which, like, sheesh, save, save some lettuce for the rest of us, all right? <laughs> With that last name. Oh, my, oh my goodness. Anyways, <laughs> Andrew says, had a game scheduled last week, which was... <laughs> Sorry, I'm so, I'm so stupid. I'm the worst. Uh, scheduled last week, which was had been planned for about a week. I get to our FLGS, and the guy I'm supposed to play is in the middle of a five-player game of Magic. I assume The Gathering. I let him know I'm here and pick out a table and start setting up as his army was still in his car. I ended up waiting for 30 minutes until he finally decided to quit his magic game. Needless to say, I was rather salty, but didn't act like an ass to him. What would be the proper protocol for something like this in the future? This was only my second game of ninth as I work a lot and have newborn. Andrew, this is a sad, sad story. I, uh, I would hate to be in your position where you're like, oh, finally. Got me a, got me time to do a game. You show up to the store and the g other guy could could fucking give a shit. You know, that yeah. sucks. Uh, and you and you treated this with a lot more grace than I would have been able to summon. I'll tell you that much. So good on you for that. Uh, as far as what to do about this, uh, I think the easiest thing to say is never play this guy again. Yep. He's 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 out. He's done. If he doesn't respect your time, then, you know, fuck him. This is one of the things, if you don't have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of friends in the hobby, you kind of got to like sow your oats around and find people you like and wait to meet people you like. Uh, and then, you, yeah, you hold on to them. You fucking, you cling. <laughs> you, you, find, you find a war gamer who doesn't suck and you fucking cling to them. It's, that's what we, you and I have been doing for four years now. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's really the kind of the only thing you can do. Uh, when you've got a lot of time commitments, uh, like it sounds like you do, you, you kind of have to let other people, uh, you, you, you kind of have to be careful with who you play. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, if you don't have an established group, then you got to put the time in to find an established group. And that might be a time consuming process. But in the end, I think you'll find that it is definitely worth it in the short term, though. This guy's done. Yep. No more. You're never going to play this guy again. Yeah, I'd say as for what the proper protocol is here for something like this in the future, which I really hope doesn't happen to you again, because this sucks and it is disrespectful of you and your time and so on, is just to be like, hey, dude, I'm out of here and just leave. Like, don't waste your time waiting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, I probably I probably would have would have jet I, at, at that point wait, after waiting half an hour. I'd be like, ah, fuck this man. I ain't playing you. But I, I understand I feel that you like don't have like ten the, minutes. I'd probably do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think so too. It's it's pretty rude of him to like be playing a different game while you're just fucking waiting. That kind of sucks. So yeah. Uh, let us know what happens in the future, though, Andrew. We'd like to uh, keep this conversation going. Okay, let's finally move on to our first segment. We're calling this one the Blood Bowl Grab Bag. That's right. We're talking. What did he call it? Meme game for boomers. Meme game for boomers. <laughs> Blood Bowl. All right. So we're going to start with a listener question. All right. Uh, uh, it's is, almost like a thruple of We Make to Calls. I was calling it a WMDK threefer. Okay. Which, oof. <laughs> sounds like reefer. Campbell, it sounds like reefer. Uh, or three for Sutherland. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm with it. All right. So the first one is. Okay. 
listeners, if you got a Polish last name, I'm, I'm just sorry. All right. I'm going to try to say the word here. I don't think I'm going to do it right. I'm going to try and I'm going to get it wrong. And you got to understand, like, that's it. I can only do so. I can only do this so well. Okay. You're trying so your t- best. So Tim Chadzikowski <laughs> can't be right, but Tim Chadzikowski, Tim C. How about that? Okay. Uh, he just he he came, he chimed in with a very supportive email to contact at 40kbackcast.com t- telling us that he wants to hear more Blood Bowl talk and he wants to hear less from 40k back, former Badcast fan, uh, which I appreciate. Man, former Badcast fan is getting a lot of fucking real estate this episode. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like, I'd say he's living in our uh, brains rent free, but I think he's paying for it. <laughs> he's the, uh, he's like the, uh, the 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 common enemy though you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. no he's the unseen yeah. heel yeah uh but we got a great email from a canadian listener eli l uh who had a lot of nice things to say but the main crux of their question was how to get started in blood bowl and uh, just for the just for the masses out there i can break this down blood bowl is actually the easiest games workshop game to get started in well maybe not maybe uh Underworlds is easier. Under, Underworlds, underpants. Uh, underpants rather. is probably easier because it's it's fewer models and it's played on a cardboard board like Blood Bowl is. So yeah, I'd say Underpants is probably easier. And it's all contained in one box essentially. Yeah. Right, but it's, uh, for Regardless, the most part, it's an easy one to get into. For the most part, Blood Bowl is also contained in one box. They're pretty much every team, uh, except for humans and orcs, you can go one box and you're fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, humans and orcs are you. You kind of need two boxes to to do it right but whatever orcs are probably fine with one box humans you definitely need two boxes though unfortunately anyways uh so all you got to do is pick the team you like and find some sort of field to play on whether that's from a starter set whether that's uh from one of the uh right now they have the the skaven and dwarf uh pitch uh on sale on the web store uh it doesn't matter like what they look like like some of them have special rules that nobody ever uses. Just you know, get the grid with the uh, w- with the squares for the players and your team ready, and that's it. That's all you need. A couple of dice uh, and the uh, the measuring sticks, which you don't really need because they can. They'll, they'll give you in the book, in the rule book, they'll give you the squares to count out for measuring passes. Mm-hmm. So you don't really need that either. Uh, so I guess the book, though, the book, the team, the field, and then you're done. Then you're playing Blood Bowl. Hmm? And that's it. It's 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 uh what? So the book is uh either forty or fifty bucks. The team is forty bucks, and a f- field or a pitch is probably another forty bucks. So you're in a, in on this thing for about one hundred twenty bucks. I mean, at that point, it's not a huge uh, ask. On top of that, to just go for maybe the starter set wholesale. Yeah. Um, but and know. that gets you a second team too, so you can you know dragoon your friends into playing also. And the new starter set for Blood Bowl, it comes with two star players, two referees, two whole teams, uh the field, the book, the cheat sheets that I don't have because I didn't buy the box set and if anybody wants to sell me, contact 40kbackgoss.com. I'd love <laughs> to buy the uh cardstock cheat sheets from the Blood Bowl box set if you got them and you're willing to sell them listeners. But yeah, you get you get the box set, you're good to go. That's really that's really probably the best way to do it. Uh, so Eli, I hope that helps. Yeah. And I'd say, honestly, um, as someone who isn't coming, this is from someone who has much of a background with blood bowl. Like I started playing with blitz bowl, you know, like I haven't actually even played blood bowl proper yet, but like blitz bowl kind of gets the flavor of what I've always imagined blood bowl would be like in a like faster playing smaller package with only half size teams. Uh, so if you're like really tentative about getting into Blood Bowl and you have a Barnes and Noble available to you, because for some galaxy brained reason it's only available at Barnes and Noble, <laughs> um, I would recommend picking up a Blitz Bowl starter um, and just giving it a go. Because if you were just like, I don't know if I like the even the idea of fantasy sport games, um, that's probably a really good in. And then you can move to Blood Bowl if you want to have like bigger teams, progression, skills, and a, a sort of different feel to the game. Great suggestion. Okay, let's get into the meat and possibly the potatoes of this uh, of this segment. So Campbell is going to start a Blood Bowl team, a Correct. halfling Blood Bowl team. And uh, you haven't figured out, not only have, have you not figured out how you're going to paint them, but you don't know what to call them yet. 
Right, because I'm feeling like we've we've kind of touched on this before when talking about Necromunda, but like finding a name for your gang, your team, your warband, whatever, is kind of like it's like okay, you've got all these little sliders you can like sliders and uh, toggles you got to figure out. It's like okay, is this going to be alliterative? Ideally, yes. Is this going to be serious? Ideally, no. <laughs> if if no, how not serious is it going to be? So, so I can I can point you in the direction of how I named my mo- most recent Blood Bowl team. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> I named them after a soft drink that is only available at Taco Bell, and then I painted them to look like that soft drink at Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Which, although we have had Australian listeners call in, and first of all, your team is called the Baja Blasters. It's important it's to know. Yeah. We have had uh, listeners from Australia where they don't have Taco Bell let us know that you can purchase Baja Blast in cans there. I, uh, okay. Two but things. I feel like it's kind of part of the experience of going to a Taco Bell to get that Baja Blast. Like, if you don't see that fucking neon teal, like, juice coming out of that machine, how do you even know it's really Baja Blast? It could so just be any great, soft drink. It's great that Australia gets the consolation prize of Baja Blast in cans. I'm mm-hmm. so happy for them for that. But for a country that, for the most part, seems to have its shit together, at least regarding COVID, like how how have y'all not gotten a Taco Bell yet? That well, seems like a pretty easy fucking slam dunk. Well, they're also missing out on the Baja Blast margarita unless you make it yourself at home. In which case, share with me that recipe. <laughs> yeah, for realsies. Okay. Anyways, okay. so Campbell, you're looking for a team name. You're looking for some color, mm-hmm, uh, and mm-hmm. you're probably looking for player names too. That that might be a little deep for this segment. Uh, yeah, I feel like that might be a little further down there. I think my list of like uh, prospective halfling player names i've come up with is basically half of the names you've called me over the course of the show because <laughs> well you know brumble barrier whatever sounds like a halfling name i feel like being a halfling is sort of like an a- it's an aspirational thing oh where, yeah where you're just like you're just like kind of chubby and you just like to eat a lot and chill and play sports and hang out with your friends and that's like being a halfling that's yeah. all they do yeah like your life is defined by being cozy that rules. Yeah, I like, I, I rule. love that. I want to do that yeah. right now. I wish I lived in a nice hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So let's start with names. Okay. Because I think I think a lot of the times the names will, you know, lead to what the color scheme eventually becomes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, I, I've got a couple names I've kind of been playing around with, and I got some color schemes in mind. But let's see where they go. Uh, the first one I got is the Cranberry Crumblers. Oh, that's good. Because, all right, figure it's a twofer. One is, you know, cranberries, like cranberry bogs are kind of like a, a Boston area thing. So it feels kind of like a, like, it's like, oh, it's kind of more or less where I spend a lot of my life. But also, um, cranberry crumble is like, you know, it's like a pastry sort of thing. And also, halfling teams are fucking terrible and crumble on the pitch. So it's a twofer. Oh, it's a threefer because three you got to yeah, throw true. the uh, alliteration in there. Oh, that is true. It is an alliteration. And I yeah. feel like for the scheme there, um, sorry, colorblind opponents of mine, I feel like I'd probably end up going for a red and green sort of look because of the. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Go palette. for like a deep red. I'd go like a deep mm. red and brown. Ooh. Like actually make it look like a cranberry crumble pastry. Or oh, pie or whatever. okay. Yeah, like kind of like a yeah. nice toasty brown instead of, instead yeah. of like a muddy one. Okay. Yeah, like a deep red and a deep, and a, you know, like a nice. A nice crisp pastry brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now we're talking. All right, all right. That see, that's a little better than going full Christmas with the color scheme. Okay, I got, I got, I got one for you. Okay, and that's a good one, by the way. The cranberry crumbles. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, in in the baking goods uh, 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 venue that we're playing in at the moment, mm-hmm. uh, the brown Bettys. Okay, okay. You know, like a nice apple brown Betty mm-hmm. or a peach brown Betty. Delicious. Oh, oh, oh brown Betty spam the lamb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's that's all right. Yeah. I yeah. feel like at that point I could also paint them to look like the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> Representing you know, a similar you, legacy in sports. You know, the Cleveland Browns are based off brownies, right? Like the, the fairy, the brownie. I that's why it's the that. Browns. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's actually kind of plays into the sort of like a uh, like dark fantasy fairy tale sort of feel a lot of old world stuff has. Okay. I like yeah. that. Okay. I've got a few more food based ones because no, I've enough. got I've got a couple food based ones too. I feel it's like great. most of them are going to be food based ones because they're halflings. They're halflings. Yeah. <laughs> the bacon buddy butterballs. 
Ooh, I like that so one. I feel yeah. like they'd be like a brown and red, sort of like a bacon red and like uh-huh. a bread brown sort of color. You gotta throw some white in there too for the fat of the bacon. Yeah, that would probably be like the, the like yeah. the trim on their uh, on their old shoulder pads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, here's one: mm-hmm. the Wienerville Schnitzels. <laughs> that's dumb. I love it. <laughs> you could throw some German flag colors in there. Yeah. I also love the idea of they're just being like, it's like, hey, welcome to the old world, Sigma's realm. We have the city of Talabheim and the land of Hochland and Wienerville <laughs> on the river Stir. <laughs> Sorry, Wienerville on the river Wiener. <laughs> Oh, come on. The Wienerville schnitzels. Who doesn't like that? I meant I meant to the Wienerville schnitzels. All right. Um, whew. Keeping it with that whole uh, old world sort of uh, food flavor. I got the Sigmarite sausage rollers. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like they would be yellow and white, which are basically the colors of Sigma, right? Which is gold, uh, which I think is more of a major Sigma thing than a fantasy thing, but who gives a shit? And also white, more or less the color of puff pastry. And I could have them like being like yellow shirts, white pants, gold, like armor shoulder pad bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I think that would probably be what I could do for the Sigma right sausage rollers. All right. So this one's got more of an AOS tinge to it much like this one all right the shayish short stack <laughs> <laughs> then that'd be in like purples and blacks they'd be like yeah. goth hobbits yeah. <laughs> which goth <laughs> hobbit is a very it's very powerful energy i'm not Listen, gonna lie bro a goth hobbit is is kind of what i want my like image to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of aspirational like how can i fit being like cozy as hell having a four course breakfast every day and also really being into like kmd fm and sisters of mercy <laughs> <laughs> can we merge because i feel like goth and hobbit are two like that venn diagram is is pretty far apart uh, cozy goth is a thing it's a, it's a lot of like oversized black sweaters okay I, i'm 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 down with that that all sounds right. that all sounds right. wonderful the shay stress stack all right i'm into it yeah all right well the thing is i'm i'm getting away from aos sort of feeling things i got a lot okay. of like more i'm um, getting technically back into- blood bowl is still in the old world well that's the thing that's why i kind of didn't want to stick too far with aos ideas okay. yeah. so um i got a few like i feel like it's really important or a very common thing rather to be like where the blank like geographic place nouns so i feel like the bogenhof and ham hocks Oh yeah, it's a yeah. pretty good one, and the yeah. uh, old Bogenhofen scheme is uh, purple and cream. So I feel like that would be kind of fun because those aren't really colors I paint very often. Yeah, and yeah. Again, here's it's a food thing too. Here's an idea. Mm-hmm. Chaos halflings. Okay, tell me more. So I, I'm just you know spitballing here, mm-hmm. but the corn cobbers. <laughs> And it's spelled K H O R N E. My team gets owned and shrinks into a corn cob every <laughs> single game. But like, like you like paint them like a lot of red, cover them in blood and stuff, and uh-huh. like maybe maybe they're a scarier that way. I mean, <laughs> I mean, halflings being scary kind of reminds me of like, would Chucky the doll really be scary? Knowing you could just fucking punt him over through a field goal, no problem, because he weighs like three pounds. I mean, yes. Yeah, okay, that's true. Have you seen that murder doll? He's Uh, awful. I have. He frightened me very much as a child. Well, all right, speaking of sort of like edgy paint schemes, is the last kind of idea I came to the table here with today. And it's another uh, old world flavor one, which would be the Karaberg Cream Puffs. Because you may know the Karaberg great swords who were like the dark red and like dark red and the black lacquered armor. And I'd be going for the same color scheme, but on these little dipshits. (laughs) <laughs> i'm i'm all for it man all right okay i got one more for you mm-hmm. so we got the baja blasters yes the premier taco bell themed blood bowl team in the world this is true the entire world yeah world 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 renowned number one ranked yeah i suggest you name your team the crunch wrap supremes <laughs> Okay, all right. And we go forward with a all bad cast, all Taco Bell Blood Bowl situation. Oh, that's really good. I do like the Crunchwrap Supremes. 
Because also mm-hmm. the Taco Bell sort of, um, they could kind of go for more of the general Taco Bell color scheme, which is like yep. all the secondary colors, pretty much. It's like purple, green, and some yellow that's or, a bit orange tinged. Yeah. Or how about the colors from a cross section of a Crunchwrap Supreme? All right. Let me look at a Crunchwrap Supreme cross section. I assume this is either going to make me very hungry or very ill. We're, we've got, we've got. Corn tortilla, we've got flour tortilla, we've got ground beef, yep, uh, seasoned yep, yep. ground beef, sorry, lettuce, tomato, sour cream, oh, hot man. sauce. You're look, you're the the amount of colors yeah, that you can yeah, yeah. get out of this out of this crunch wrap cross section. Yeah, because like if you look at a real photo of one, the cross section is not very inspiring. But if you look at the um Oh no, you gotta look at like the food stylist yeah, photo. Yeah, the yeah, food yeah, stylist yeah. photo that's yeah. like painted with lacquer where you got like you got the alfresco salsa, which is like red and white, you got some sour cream, which is white, you got some green lettuce, you got some yellow corn tortilla, some like vibrant yellow nacho cheese sauce, and then like the deeper brown of the seasoned ground beef mm. is very good with like the lighter tan around of that mm-hmm. uh of that tortilla. You know what? I do like this idea a lot, which sucks because when you mentioned the Baja Blasters, I had one more idea and it's a Uh different food chain. Okay. The Margaritaville Manglers. (gasps) Could you do Hawaiian shirts? That's what I'd have to do. I'd have to paint them all in Jimmy Buffett. First of all, I have to look up Jimmy Buffett Hawaiian Uh, shirt collection and paint each one in a different style of a, of a James T Buffett Hawaiian shirt. Campbell, are you ready to do that? I think I'm ready. I feel like okay. heraldry, freehanding heraldry. That's the, that's the, lear, that's the learning game. Yeah. Fuck this that. here, that's easy. this is the, uh, this is the final boss of heraldry, which is Hawaiian shirts. Wow. So okay. Do you think the Margaritaville manglers, it also kind of, <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, this is my <gasps> team of Campbell, Campbell, Campbell. middle-aged no, 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 Campbell, oh, Campbell, 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 Campbell. What do you got? The Margaritaville muddlers. Mm, mm, okay. Because it's because a muddler mm, is a, a thing you, you find at a cocktails. bar. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And they're fucking they're fucking halflings. They they're just muddle. They're just shitheads. I don't know if I prefer muddlers or manglers. I'm gonna be completely honest. Well, um, it's up to you. It's your team. I'm just I'm just coming at you with suggestions. Yeah, no, I do appreciate that. That is a new angle. The Margaritaville theme, though, yeah, I got to tell you, that's that is excellent. Yeah, it's that is so excellent. That, I mean, it's got to be that's got to be it. Yeah, it's got to be the Margarita. These these halflings have got to be coming from Margaritaville. <laughs> OK, yeah. Got to be hanging 10 on their way to the pitch. Yeah. I no, no no well I mean hanging ten beers mm-hmm. <laughs> not actually surfing I don't think any no, Jimmy no. Buffett fans actually do any recreational activity except drink uh, or near sand yeah, they, they also drink near <laughs> boats please and you know if I show if these guys show up to every single game with ten land sharks which I assume given their stature will go right through them yeah that'll be pretty all right all right all right Margaritaville mangoes is good Margaritaville muddlers. So I, I like it just because it, it you know ties in some more drinking stuff, but mm-hmm. you know it's 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 your decision ultimately, and I'll respect and support any decision you choose to make. But oh boy, I cannot to, I cannot wait to see a test model. I'm excited. We got we're talking about khakis, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're we're talking about we're talking about Hawaiian shirts, khakis, and uh, have you considered mm-hmm. green stuff sunglasses? Uh, I have already primed them gray because I was figuring that because that's okay. the one spray paint I haven't packed yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just without a decision. Uh, sunglasses okay. would be good, as would be. Um, I guess you could probably get some dad jeans in there too. Um, yeah, painting wise. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Acid washed, ideally. Oh, of, of course. Is there any other wash? <laughs> Not that I'm aware. Right? of. Right. Okay, that's great. The Margaritaville. Whatever you you end up deciding here, that's fantastic. This what a good segment. I'm glad what we a, were able to workshop this one, make something wonderful together. Dang, way to hold way to hold off to the end on that one. That's a, that it, that's not one I came prepared with. That's when I dang was talk ex- about talk about delayed gratification. <laughs> yeah, I've Oof. been nudging enthusiast for dozens of episodes now. All right, gang. Uh, so here's the last crusade focus for 2020. We're talking about Death Watch, and again, Crusade Focus is our. Uh, 
our little thing where we like to focus on what is the coolest aspect of playing Warhammer 40,000. And that, of course, is Crusade Games. So with all the new codexes coming out, I'm sorry, codices coming mm -hmm. out. Thank you. Uh, we are taking a look at the coolest section of each book, the Crusade section, which a lot of times gets overlooked by the other podcasts, by the other websites. Uh, and we're talking about where we can find the most fun out of these armies. And uh, let's talk about Death Watch real quick. I want to open up with that if I was not a 40K player yet, if I didn't have a huge Raven Guard army at this point, I would want to start a Death Watch army. Hmm. Okay. I think after looking through this book, I think the kill teams, especially the Primaris kill teams, are so fucking cool. Yeah, they're really neat. Like this, this is how I think all Marine armies should operate. Like the surgical strikes, the extremely uh, customizable nature of the squads. This is the coolest shit. Yeah, they got the hyper specialized. Like they do, you can get like special rules for every single squad to kind of be like a certain kind of hunter and so yeah. on. Like there's some, there's a lot of the sort of promise of Death Watch from editions before kind of, I'd say, cashed in now in a very cool way. They've done an incredible job with this book. I'm a huge fan. And again, if I didn't already have a bajillion points of Raven Guard, I, and I wanted to start a Marine Army, I would start Death no, Watch. Please, start a second Marine Army. Not just a second Marine Army, no. but a second Marine Army no. wearing black power armor. No, absolutely not. I'm, <laughs> I am... I am way too, way too deep into Raven Guard to fuck around with Death Watch at this point. That ship has sailed, that it has. unfortunately. All right, let's start off with agendas. We got five. I counted this time. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm going to try not to skip any. Again, All right, first one. Agendas are the secondary objectives you can kind of pick for your army at the start of a game that give them not victory points for the battle, but give your units experience points. First one is called Secure Xenotech. I'm already a huge fan of this one. Uh, the names in this book are completely oh, indecipherable. They I, are I love it. Wild. There's so many made yeah. up words. They fucking rule. This isn't even the best one in the agendas list. No, it's not. So this one is your opponent places an objective outside their deployment zone. If you can grab it and bring it back to your deployment zone, that unit gets three XP. Uh, well, they get 3 XP for grabbing it, for performing an action on it. Uh, and if they bring it back, they get a free relic or... Uh, something called Bestowed in Honor and Necessity, which we'll get to in a bit. It's, gang, it's just a different type of relic mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that uh, that your army can use. This is really cool. I love agendas that get you free shit. Yeah, agendas, this is kind of like, we've talked, this is definitely one of those where it's like, it's, I think all of these are going to end up with one of those enemy places objective and you can do something to it. Yep. And the one for this one is extremely fucking cool because like you said, it gets you free shit, but it also changes how the battle is fundamentally played. And the unit that does retrieve it also gets bonus experience too. Like if you, you get three for performing that action, but you get five if you bring it home. Hachi, hachi. So the unit that's doing this, actually what they're doing is going to be, they're kind of on their own little mission in the breadth of the greater game. And, and this like is the coolest lot. thing about Crusade is that you get that. You don't get that in match play. Mm -hmm. Match play is purely objective-based game, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have to take in list composition, you have to take in uh, your opponent's list composition, and then you have to balance that against your game plan and your strengths of your army, and you have to do all this fucking brain genius thinking before every game. But Crusade games, you can just roll up Plop the miniatures you want to play with on the table. Say, this is how I'm going to play the game. Pick the agendas that suit that and fucking slam ham and it's fun and easy. Yep, it's the way it should be. I mean, I won't say easiness are the biggest byline here because there's a lot of added complexity that Crusade adds, but it's all very cool added complexity. And it's unit right. by unit. Like It's low low pressure complexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not a, it's not like, oh, I have to make this choice or I'm going to fuck this whole game up. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to do what I want and try to play the game I want to play. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That's, that's I think, the, the main selling factor for Crusade is that you get to play 40k the way you want to play it when you play Crusade. All right, let's move on though. Uh, this next one's called Watch Eternal. Now, Campbell, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be watching anything for eternity. I mean, I've been doom scrolling for the entirety of the year, so yeah, I'd like to put an end to that too. So this one has it, so if no enemy units are in your deployment zone at the end of the battle, each of your surviving units gains two experience points. I won't say this is a super exciting one, but it's a very dependable one. It's kind of nice to have the balance between like cooler ones that are a little hard to secure and 
easier ones are maybe less exciting. Uh, but like against like guard or whatever, this is a shoe in against you know nids or orcs less so. I think it's fine. Oh, this one fucking rules. This one kicks dicks, dude. This I, is a really strong agenda. No, no, let's think it's good mechanically. It's not like. Oh, but uh, yeah, uh, like it's not, it's not interesting. It's not thematic. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. also, like Death Watch don't really defend very well because they are very small, very mobile force. So you don't want them like hanging out, watching the line. Like you want right. them like pushing out there. Uh, right. I think it's again though. Like I think it's mechanically very sound. I think it's going to be useful. Yeah. Okay. So this next one is extremely thematic, but I think is not useful whatsoever. It's called Slayers of the Alien Horde. You keep a tally of enemy Xenos units killed by each unit. And for every two marks from that tally, you get one experience points. All right. Well, You're against like Tau, where they have a ton of small units of drones and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is a pretty good one. You could get a, you know, you could get a unit killing two, three, four uh, enemy units and grab a couple of points. But for the most part, uh, this is no good. I, but it is like what they do. Yeah, it is literally what the Death Watch does. It is the watch that they assumedly, or the death that they assumedly watch. I also think it's like, you're going to do this anyway. This might change some target priority up, so you so you can make sure that this unit gets two kills, so you can get two kills, etc. But it's nothing that exciting it's like it's it's fine and it also just we're going to be referring to rules that apply to xenos armies a lot because there's a lot of these that refer to they don't refer to xenos armies per se but they say you know orcs tau eldar of all flavors um non-imperial non-chaos basically that's it um so yeah whenever we say xenos that's really what we're getting at all right next up is called strength from diversity which i like that title i do too I think it's a. I think it's I, aspirational, honestly. Yeah, not just for Death Watch, but for perhaps the world, mm -hmm. the real world. All right, this one's great. It's keep range and melee kill tallies for each unit for every pair. That is for every one ranged kill and one melee kill. The unit gets two experience points. I like it. It's it's uh, it's a bit variable, like depending on the unit you you have like yeah your eliminators aren't gonna get many melee kills i don't think uh but it represents well, here's the thing campbell oh yeah what you can do with death watch kill teams is you can have like five uh infiltrators and or i'm sorry incursors and then also have like five eliminators in the same squad that's true split that, them up mm. and uh, that's pretty fucking easy to do, right? Yeah, there. that's true. Um, it does represent also the sort of flexibility that Marines express in the lore and on the tabletop, too. Like, mm -hmm. this is kind of that good mix of thematic and, like, this isn't... It, yeah, that, that's it. It's the mix of thematic and function. Like, it's a really cool sort of mix of the two. And again, yeah. ideally, it's what you're doing anyway, but mm -hmm. it might require a little bit of a difference. Because, like, if you have a unit that's, let's say, very heavy on, like, Blade Guard veteran type guys or whatever, like, yeah, they're probably not going to kill a ton with shooting, but you'll still try to make that work for them. I like it a lot. You won't You won't forget about those pistols. No, you will not forget about those Strength 5 AP2 pistols or whatever. I think they're Strength 4. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyways... The last one, and the best named thing in the whole code. Absolute. Xenocyker Assault. <laughs> That's one word, Xenocyker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this one score point each time uh, a unit from your army denies or kills a Xenocyker. So score, so you, you get an experience point for each unit for every time they do one of those two things. Against a Tyranid army, Campbell... This is the one to pick because yeah. they bring a lot of psychers. Yeah, it's actually it's one point for each deny and two point for each destroyed Xeno psyker. Oh, so oh, against shit. like yeah, it's it, again it's important that it is against Xeno psychers, not any psyker, because if that was the case, it would t take playing against like Grey Knights or Thousand Suns into playing against a bunch of pinatas full of experience points. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, against Tyranids, this is fantastic. Against Eldar, this is fantastic. Against Tau, mm -hmm. less so. <laughs> Not at all, because they don't have any psychers. Unless okay. they ally in them, yeah. Let's do requisitions. These are great. First one, we talked about it, mentioned it earlier. Bestowed. Sorry, that's a... That's a fucking Fuck one. you, Baltimore! Thank you. Bestowed in honor and necessity. This one gives a sergeant a relic from a uh, reduced list of relics. Yeah, it's basically like artificer armor, mastercrafted weapon, digital weapons, bane 
like Bane bolts and Artificer bolt cache, it reminds me a lot of uh, the Honored Sergeant stratagem in the old 8th edition Space Marine mm-hmm. Codex, which I used mm-hmm. to turn my Aggressor Sergeant into a fires twice damage to bolt storm gauntlet monster. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, it turns your Sergeant into a mini character, which I think is pretty neat. It's perfect for Death Watch because they're all about mini characters. Yes, they are. There's This is not the only rule that does mini characters in this uh, Crusade section. <laughs> Uh, next we have kill team specialism and this one is you, a kill team is what you call your basic your troops units for the most part yeah. yeah uh and this gives a kill team a specialism and i gotta make a quick note about the word specialism mm-hmm. i hate it yeah it's it's a weird one hate that word hate that word cool well as for what those um special t's are uh, it, they uh, basically <laughs> let you tailor a unit to reroll ones to wound on a chosen battlefield roll. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, fast attack, heavy support, whatever. Uh, and they have some other little things attached in there, too, but that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, I would do this on every single unit I had the opportunity to if I played Death Watch in this, because I feel yeah. like that's the, like, that's Death Watch's whole shtick is hyper specialized squads. Because right. if you're like, oh, this squad's going to shoot that tank, all right, that's fine, whatever, cool. But this squad are tank hunters, they're going to shoot that tank that's cooler yeah i believe a a kill team has to get up to level three before they can take this though yeah once they're so battle hardened yeah yeah so you gotta you gotta work to get them up to the level of specialties all right next one is expiation in vigil I've now never Campbell, heard that word before <laughs> did you have to look up what expiation means in the dictionary before the show i would have if i cared <laughs> i did and, what does uh, it can, mean? Educate us, I can Daniel. Tell, I can tell you and the listeners that it means it's the act of making amends or reparation for guilt or wrongdoing atonement. Okay, well, that explains why it turns one guy in the squad into a black shield who yes. are like last survivors of squads or potentially Marines from traitor legions who mm-hmm. just aren't really saying what's up. Yep. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. And they're kind of like a little mini character as well. Yeah, you add plus two weapon skill, plus one wound, and plus one attack. Uh, it's pretty fucking badass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, yeah. they're good upgrade for a squad. Yeah. And then finally, rearm, reform, and redeploy. And this lets you just fuck with how your kill team is constructed. Yeah. And I like this a lot just because, again, this is what Death Watch is supposed to do. You're supposed to have the the customization ability that is unmatched by any other army. Uh, and this requisition really encapsulates that. Yeah, because this isn't just like switching out a flamer for a plasma gun. This is like completely swap up what their gear is. Like, yeah. oh, he's an he's a intercessor. Well, now he can be an aggressor or whatever. Like, it's right. that level of it. Uh, I also like the note that you can kind of like fuck with the squad however you want, so long as you don't exceed your points limit. But also, so long as you um, still include all the squad members in it. Yeah. Uh, so if your squad has, let's say, six dudes, you still got to take six dudes. I like that a lot. It's extremely fluffy for Death Watch, who are trained in all kinds of equipment. And I, I love it. This one's I don't know how often I'd actually use it. I'll be honest, but I think it's extremely cool. Yeah, I think, it, you know, during the course of a campaign, if you're like, like, fuck, I need more aggressors. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a second. I can get more. Yeah. All right, let's move on to battle traits. There are a ton of these, so I'm going to suggest we both pick two and talk about them. Okay. So I'm going to start uh, with <laughs> just one of the best named things ever. Uh, it's called Perpetual <laughs> Repugnance. This one's bolded on my fucking thing. Because, yeah, yeah, I agree. This is the best name. This might be the best name of the Codex. <laughs> uh, it's Death Watch Chaplain Units only, and it's, it's fucking metal. Uh, each time this model recites a litany, if it is within 12 inches of a Xenos unit, that litany is automatically inspiring. Do not roll. Not only does it have a great name, it is a powerful as fuck ability. Can you imagine just being near some dude who you hate so much that there's actual divine intervention happening? That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like if me and 40 former Badcast fan were in the same room. <laughs> Fucking A. All right, go yeah, ahead. Um, I really like Chosen Prey. Uh, so basically, Ooh, it's for yeah. a non vehicle yeah, yeah, unit. Yeah. You get to add one, you get to add plus one to hit against one Xeno species, which is 
kind of lets you really have your orc hunters, your nid hunters, your elder hunters, whatever. And I like that from a rules perspective because, like, I know it's a little specialized, but it's, you know, it's against a whole type of army, but also it's a really good modeling project. Because, yeah. like, your Tyranid hunters, well, now you can give them, you can make them look kind of like the uh, the old Ultramarines Tyranid hunters or like the artwork of them that's even more aspirational. I think it opens up a really cool modeling project that even outside of Crusade is still going to be very cool and very on brand for Death Watch. Uh, okay, so my second one is uh, in the theme of perpetual repugnance. This one's called Unwavering Enmity. <laughs> yes, some rules too. And this is uh, Death Watch units excluding vehicles. Uh, while this unit is engagement range of a Xenos unit, it is always treated as having made a charge move for the purposes of the shock assault ability. This is great. You're always getting that plus one attack when you're in combat with Xenos. Yeah, which fantastic. That's 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 fantastic. Uh, I also like one more for non-vehicle units, which is special operations, because uh, it means a unit when your unit is in enemy's deployment zone, they get objective secured, which is cool. Like, you know, that that's cool. Um, that's very cool. Yeah. But on top of that, if they already have it, they count as two models each. That's really good. So like that, that, that's actually in, that's an interesting utility thing. And I and think with an army like Death Watch, who are going to perpetually be outnumbered by almost every army, that's clutch. I really like that rule because, again, equal parts mechanically useful and more appropriate. Love it. All right. Next up, we have the new crusade content called Masters of the Specialisms. There it is, that word again. Mm -hmm. And this one is interesting, I think. It is, you can give it to a Death Watch Captain or Watch Master and it it's a, it doesn't really affect the games too much, but it will get units more experience if they are a master of killing a certain type of battlefield role like troops or heavy support yeah. or fast attack or whatever uh so uh, this one is if you're if you're if your watch master or captain is a master of blank and blank of course is the name that they give all these uh then at the end of the game if a unit has killed a uh uh the correct battlefield role and if you choose them for uh, marked for greatness, which gives the unit three XP at, at the end of a battle, uh, they get five XP instead. Yep. So it is a cool way to get the rest of your units up on experience pretty quickly. I think too, if you're giving out five XP at the end of every battle. Yeah, it's only one one unit in your whole army, but that's still that's still some. I think it. I think this one's fine. It's not that exciting. Like it's not that exciting. I feel like your master Venator, or master Malleus, or master Bader, or whatever, should have Whoa. something else going on that makes them a little cooler than just that. But eh, whatever. All right, it's fine. It it isn't as cool as like the uh, Space Marine Company sort of things, or like the Necron uh, Dynastic Epithet sort of thing. Oh but God, that's been any, the coolest. That's thing so been far. the coolest so far, without a doubt. But it's still cool. Uh, it, or actually, I'll say it's okay. It's okay. It's not really. It's okay. And they got some uh, special battle scars too, which are both cool and thematic. Yes. And a couple of them, like uh, there's one called a Brotherhood in Turmoil. You add plus one strength and attack, but you get the effects of two battle scars that are from the Warhammer Forty Thousand book. Uh, I think they are disgraced and mark of shame. Correct. Uh, <laughs> which is like I think it's like minus one leadership and lose obsec. Oh damn. Which is like like ugh. Well, the, thing is, <laughs> the thing is I like about these is first of all you can only take that one if you lost the battle you just played in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because there's only three battle scars. I don't mind going through all three of them because they're really fun. Uh, and I again they go to any infantry or bike units. Uh, everything else in the army takes generic ones in the rule book. Yeah. Um, that one's cool. Bring not shame to your chapter means they can. Uh, you can only take if a unit got zero experience points in the last battle, which mm -hmm. is like insult to injury. That's like they got blown off the table turn one, uh, or basically roll die when they shoot or charge on a one. They have to do it at the closest target, which yeah. is unlikely. Like it's not likely to really cause a problem all that often, but when it does, it's probably gonna be a time when you really don't need it. But they got beat so mad. <laughs> they got beat so bad. They're mad. Get mad, stay bad. Uh, it does mean they can use the <laughs> atonement through honor stratagem, even if they don't have a black shield in it, and they can use it for free if they do, which is a cool way to balance the debuff with a new opportunity and new tactical mm -hmm. sort of uh, ability. I like that sort of thing a lot. And the last one, which is the one with the best fucking name for any battle scar, is Xenophobic Fuhrer. 
Uh, it's not Furor. Furor. Furor? No, no, no. It's Furore. <laughs> I, I fucking knew that's what your correction was going to be. I fucking knew it. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you went there. Um, so, yeah, basically, they can only take if they were killed by a Xeno's unit. And while units of that specific Xeno's army are on the table, this unit gets plus one attack, but can't hold objectives or perform actions, which it um, that's really bad. Yeah. But it does remind me of the old Necromunda rules uh, where in you know before the modern Necromunda, the old school Necromunda, where you would end up with uh, a grudge against a specific fighter or a specific gang. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. It's 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 thematic. It's fun. It's cool. And when you think of like even uh, Captain Sicarius, where he has like basically PTSD after getting owned by the Necrons on Damnos, like it kind of represents that sort of thing again on the tabletop. When that's something that really wouldn't have been something that had a rules representation before. I like it a lot. All right. Next up, we've got special issue equipment. Uh, so this is stuff that you can use when in. Uh, a unit gains experience, it gains a level. Uh, instead of taking a battle honor, you can take special issue equipment. And this is stuff that enhances their combat abilities in the game. For the most part, this stuff is real fucking good. We got two categories, special issue war gear and special issue ammunition. Now, this is where things can get confusing because there is a rule called special issue ammunition for Death Watch, and it really only applies to small Marines. Hmm. Uh, and it is the rule that allows their guns to get, their bolters to get really fucking good. If it applied to Primaris Marines, th- then Death Watch would be too good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think is the is the prevailing thought process behind it, which hmm. is fully believable because the special issue ammunition stuff is really, really well, good. They already have special uh, issue ammunition in the regular rules. This is like special or issue ammunition. <laughs> Right, but the problem is it's the same name, yes. which is not not so great. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, you do not need to have the special issue ammunition rule to use this special issue ammunition. I'm getting real tired of saying these fucking words, but they're really, really good. Let me mention my favorite ammunition real quick. It's the Metal Storm Frag Shells. Mm-hmm. Uh, each time an attack is made with a weapon with firing this special issue ammunition, that attack has a type characteristic of Assault D3 and the Blast ability. That's so, so you are cool. taking your bolters, and now you're firing grenades. Yeah, which is what they are in the lore anyway. They're little rocket-propelled grenade launchers, but in a very cool way. I like that a lot. Um, I think there's a cool thing to do. There's things like that where it's like, okay, this just gives it some sort of weapon change or some sort of uh, weapon bonus. But I like the ones that kind of turn off a special rule, which is a little feel baddy, but I think very thematic. So like my fair one would be my second favorite name of one of these, which is D revenant shells, which more or less mm. turns off reanimation protocols on a Necron unit yeah. when you shoot them with it. And again, it's, that's hyper specialized, but that's what death watch are all about. Now yeah, my, pretty good. <laughs> my favorite name is one that's always good, which is thermic penetrator rounds. Mm. Please play the pony button. Uh, oh, fuck yeah. And uh, thermic penetrator rounds just give you plus one to hit and AP minus one. And it stacks with doc- combat doctrines for that uh, that extra AP. So you're going to end up with some stupid dangerous bolt guns with that yep. with that weapon. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I'm just thinking of Metal Storm frag shells on stalker bolt rifles. <laughs> yeah. Which which is which is unfair. Uh, D assault assault d3 strength five ap minus two damage to <laughs> blast yeah Yo, that's yeah that's that's problematic <laughs> <laughs> okay uh then they have special issue war gear uh these are things that like uh give the smoke screen keyword or give the melt bombs keyword and all this stuff uh but my favorite one is the uh teleport transponders each model in the unit gets the teleport strike ability which means that you can deep strike and this entire unit if you so please and my fa- very cool thing yeah and my favorite is the one that's definitely a prog rock band somewhere soul troll divinator uh, which is basically lets you use the Auspex scan stratagem for only one CP as opposed to two and extends the range out to 18 inches instead of 12 inches. And I think, Which is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking wild because that's already a good stratagem. It's like, oh, my unit, my unit containing five aggressors leveled up. Huh, I wonder what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, it's damn good. 
Yeah, this Death Watch stuff uh, completely rules. All right, let's get, get to Crusade Relics. Uh, so the first two levels of stuff, it's okay, blah, blah, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's only three relics in here. Uh, but the legendary relic for Death Watch is called the Watcher's Veil. And y'all strap in for this shit it's because it's wild. Uh, I'm just going to read it. The bearer has the following ability. The Watcher's Veil Aura. While a friendly Death Watch core or Death Watch character unit is within six inches of the bearer, that unit cannot be targeted if the firing model is more than 30 inches away, and each time a ranged attack is made against that unit, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. That is fucking mental. Yeah, like, imagine your Space Marine battle pile, and now it's invisible. <laughs> Yeah, that that that's fantastic. Yeah, it's also a three requisite. Uh, I'm sorry, a, uh, uh, a three crusade point and two requisition point legendary relic. Mm. So like it's this is the best of the best stuff you can get. Again, the Death Watch stuff, like the Death Watch Codex is so good. I am I am like fully envious of all the cool shit in this book. Yeah. The other two relics are cool. They're fine. Um, they're just not. I want that Corvus cool. Black Stars. I want. Uh, God, God, fuck, man. Yeah. No, I want the Aliens dropship, but stubbier. <laughs> no, Corvus Black Stars are actually what almost got me to play Death Watch back in the day. And through whatever galaxy brain reason, I decided to go with Black Templars instead. So fuck me, I guess. Yeah. Death Watch are real cool. Death gang. Watch are really fucking uh, cool. Um, Crusade is the coolest way to play 40K. Yeah. No. If you don't agree with me, fight me. Yeah, no, I think that's completely fair. I think this is also like, this is how you get the most Death Watch for Death Watch, you know? Like, Crusade wise, mm -hmm. it's really let you push the parts of Death Watch that make them special, that make them cool. The idea of like, with Crusade, where you have like a set roster and you're kind of like swapping things in for that specific battle kind of makes me think even more like you're picking out the right team for the mission, which is exactly what Death Watch is all about. I love this. So far, everything we've gone over for Crusade has knocked it pretty much out of the park. And Absolutely. this is no exception. I'm I'm really... They're not my army. I'm super happy for them. Death Watch, great codex. Absolutely, my friend. Okay. You know what time it is. Mm -hmm. It's time for fact or fan fiction, or foff, as we call it around here. Now, Campbell, mm -hmm. this is the last bad cast of 2020. Oh, fuck. Now there's expectations. So I, I got to tell you, <laughs> I hope this is good. I'm going to go right down the middle here and say it's not. War Space Hammer Space 40K is here on your screen, telling the tale of chaos, betrayal, triumph of good and evil, exceeding limits, and becoming me. Ooh. Episode 1, Chapter 1, The Ansithorpe, The Beginning. I crouched down beside the rock as it splintered over my head, clinking on my helmet. My brother had shot that bolt the bolt that was aimed at me. I raised my bolt pistol in front of my chest and took a deep breath. I jumped up and ran left, firing at my brother to provide cover for myself. He fired back as my bolts ripped up the ground around him. He stood still, only moving his arm and fingers to fire at me. I reached the cover of a turned over bike, capital B. Its combo bolter was still attached and had reserve bolts. I pushed against it as hard as I could, gradually tipping it onto its wheels. The back tire was ripped off by my brother's bolt. I turned the handlebars on the bike, capital B, to face my brother, also capital B. I pulled the trigger and two bolts ripped out of the barrel, one landing next to my brother's leg. The other shot past his head, and he had to jump sideways to avoid it. Good! If I could keep him moving with the bike, capital B, I should be able to pick one shot of with my bolt pistol. He rolled to the right as another two bolts ripped out of the combo bolter, tearing up the ground to form a small crevice. The other bolt formed a crevice behind my brother. I aimed just behind him at the crevice. If I place my shot right, it should collapse. <laughs> the bolt shot out of the barrel and hit the crevice behind my brother, capital B, causing him to turn around to the small avalanche behind him. The second bolt flew towards him. He turned around to meet it. It hit him in the chest and a uh, jumped backwards, landing on the pile of rocks behind him. I got up and walked towards him, bolt pistol in hand and ready. I reached him and looked down at his bleeding body, disgust floating around in my stomach. He had foolishly betrayed me and the Emperor to follow Horus. 
who had been slain by the emperor himself. He was my brother, yet he wasn't. The symbol of the Black Legion was still evident, though faded with battle, on his shoulders. He was a follower of Abaddon the Despoiler and had suffered for it. He will die for that. He will die for that what he once believed in. The Despoiler's servants suffered and were killed for it. I raised my bolt pistol and aimed it at his head. I nodded and pulled the trigger. Blood splattered the rocks behind him and ran between them. Blood sprayed on my Blood Angel's armor and my pistol, capital P. My Psyker, capital P. Blood flowed through my veins as I walked off to a new unit, my own being slain by my brothers. My brother fought with me and against me. This is the beginning of Vianzathorpe. All right. That was uh, a fucking word salad. <laughs> so I cut it off right there, but further down I do see first mistake. They bent down to examine the crevice before walking away. Yeah, man. Uh, I didn't... Uh I didn't really enjoy that at all, bud. <laughs> That's okay. He, I don't choose these for enjoyment. I choose these because, uh, actually, I don't really have an answer for why I choose these, but I did choose that one. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, I guess. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> I don't like it. It's fan fiction. You are correct. That is episode one, Viancethorpe, chapter one, default chapter by Spinksy. Well, thanks, Spinksy. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, gang. Let's do a little couple of plugs and then we'll get the hell out of here. Uh, you can find us on social media. Twitter is uh, where I think we spend most of our time all day, every day. Just addicted to that doom scroll. Uh, I am at DB underscore sleazy. He is at brother SRM. Uh, and if you do not know and haven't seen pictures of our miniatures, mm then Twitter is a great place to follow us on because we post them mm -hmm. all the time. Or at least you do all the time. I post them every couple months when I finish something. <laughs> uh, Campbell, you're also on Tumblr. You're Cam2D on Tumblr. Yep, Cam2D.tumblr.com where I've got pictures of models going back like fucking close to a decade at this point. Uh, you also have your own YouTube channel for your animation called Camtoons. Yes, I do. Uh, which everybody should check out. It's delightful. Why, thank you. What other social media do we talk about <laughs> uh, on this show? I'm having I'm having brain moments. That's all right. Over We're here. recording later than we usually do. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, uh, which is oh Facebook. Uh, right. I don't I don't go on Facebook. No, you shouldn't. It's a terrible website full of terrible people. And also, I'm there. So uh, that's uh, 40kbadcast.facebook.com. Facebook.com slash 40kbadcast. That's ooh, how it is. Ooh, um, ooh. Took a while to get the actual name of the site. Or if you search fucking 40kbadcast, you'll probably find it. And yeah, we post up there. Um, you can post there too. <laughs> uh, we also do sell merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash 40kbadcast. We got stickers now. Um, stickers! According to Spreadshirt, the last day to order things to get them in time for Christmas is the 17th, which is the day after we record this, which will probably be before you listen to this show. So if you want to get something for your special somebody or worst enemy for Christmas or whatever holiday you choose to celebrate, it's probably too late when you're listening to this now, unless you're Campbell, for 2021. Campbell, did you know that our stickers are available on the 40k Badcast uh, spreadshirt page and you can get them in white matte or white glossy? The answer, correct, is glossy. Oh, 100%. Yeah, you need it to be as garish as humanly possible. <laughs> uh, and you can get them in like you can get like 500 of them. You should get like 500 of them and just vandalize every single street sign around your home. I feel like I feel like I should get some of these. <laughs> I probably should get some of these and paint, put, post them over where I scratched off all those fascist stickers in my neighborhood. There Not going to go. miss this street. Not going to miss it for one moment. We also have Patreon where you can support the show at multiple tiers. And we post stuff every month on the Patreon. We have recorded something for December, but I haven't edited it yet. So I will get there and get it up before, hopefully within a week or so. Yeah, well, I'm hoping people can get to enjoy that before, uh, again, before holiday of their choosing. But yeah, we'll have something for you next month there too, even though our recording schedule is going to get impacted a bit by me moving across the country. We will definitely be back in January with a new regular episode, new bonus episode, and more besides. If I have to record a bonus episode with myself and a guest, Campbell, I will do it, and it will be fine. All right, it will be with my blessing, no matter who it is. Maybe no matter who it is, but... You know, we keep uh, the same company. finally, well, se second to finally, goonhammer.com. We both write for it. Go check it out. It's a good website. Yep, we do. And then finally, finally, 
contact at 40kbadcast.com is the best way to reach out to us if you have the uh, need to do so. It's our email. We read it. We love it. We love interacting with our listeners, sending pictures, receiving pictures, especially of pets. You got cute yeah. pets. Guess who wants to see them? It's me, Chaboy Deezy. And also me, your friend, Campbell. I don't really have one yet. <laughs> and gang, 2020 has been a pretty much unending shitstorm from the word go. Do you all remember when World War Three was imminent in January? That was cool. Do you ever look back at um, news coverage from February or March and they're always like, yeah, just wash your hands. It'll be fine. Yeah, I broke my toe in April. Oh, fun. I don't know if you remember that. I, I, I barely remember it. Fuck, I do. I remember you. Uh, I remember you. Was that when you made your home workout system that was basically like a mop handle and two milk jugs? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was a rake and two folding chairs. There it yes. was. There it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, How many yeah, folding so, chairs can you bench? Uh, <laughs> more than two. Um, it's been a hell of a year. It's been tough on everybody. People have lost their jobs. People have lost their lives. Almost 300,000 in the United States alone. Uh, and we know that it has been a complete and utter shit show from top to bottom. We haven't gone to any events. Uh, I, this is the least amount of 40K I've played in recent memory. Uh, and that includes 7th edition. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's been tough, you know? It's been real tough. Uh, but 2020 is coming to a close and uh, I just want to take this time to thank the listeners for sticking with us this year. Uh, y'all are such a wonderful light of hope and happiness in this world that has gone extremely dark for the past 365 or so days. So thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for writing in. Thank you for reaching out to us, talking to us, and telling us about your experiences. It it absolutely lifts my heart every time I read one of these emails when somebody tells us that they're enjoying the show or that they're fucking speed running the bad cast <laughs> all in one week or something. You know, like, be careful. Too much of a good thing and all that. But thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being a part of something that we love to do. And Campbell, thank you for being you. Thank you, Dan. Like, honestly, the every two weeks or so coming together to do this show has been kind of like not just my chief way to tell time <laughs> in 2020, <laughs> but has just been like a consistent dopamine rush. It's been a consistent like source of good feels and yucks and good times. And without it, this would have been an even darker year than it has been. And I also appreciate all the listeners who not only send in uh, pictures of their models, pictures of their pets, uh, good wishes and so on, but also like stuff for us to talk about in the show, whether that is like the Patreon bonus episode we did, which was all user submitted questions, which was a ton of fun to do. Uh, the We Make to Call segment, which you might not, you might think has been the whole time but that's actually a relatively like that that's not hasn't been there the whole time that might no, I don't even know no. how far back that goes but like that just kind of is like a nice way to kind of keep our fingers in the pulse of where our listeners are. It used to be, I, I had to find like, Oh, these used to be on Quora like Quora answers or yeah. Yahoo answers. Yeah. But now we get, we get so many questions in our email. It doesn't matter. I I've got, I've got content for fucking months. Yeah. And also you don't have to go on Quora or Yahoo answers or God forbid, Daka Daka. You can't tell them oh making the sign God. of the cross right now. But yeah, like it's just been all, this show and all the people around it have just made again, the worst year a less painful one than it could have been. And I know that might seem kind of like damning with faint praise, but that means more than you could possibly know. Okay, gang, this is it. We're coming to the end now. Happy holidays. Tell the people you love that you love them. Don't let you, don't let the distance of COVID-19 force you to not share the way you feel about people. Let them know. It's important. You never know when the last time you're going to be able to talk to somebody is. And on that note, call your mom. Yep. She probably wants to hear from you. <laughs> Absolutely does. <laughs>